Hey everyone, it's Mark Skipper Mark, and today I'm going to show you how Matt installed this AEV spare tire carrier onto his 2015 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. One of the reasons why he went with this one is that it mounts to the frame of the vehicle, even though it looks like it's in the bumper, it's not. Inside, it's actually bolted to the frame of the vehicle, and he didn't want it just to be hanging on the bumper, and he didn't want one that mounts to the back of the Jeep because he didn't want all that weight pulling down on the body. The reason he had to get a new one is that he got new tires and the weight capacity was too heavy for the factory uh, spare tire carrier. So another reason Matt liked the AEV carriers is the way they work with the spare tire. On a lot of carriers, you have to move the tire out of the way and then you have to open up the door separately. And with the AEV model, it's all tied together via a linkage system in here. So what you do is you just open it up like this. And the tire actually moves out of the way. You have full access to everything in the trunk. And then you just, that's pretty heavy. You just close it like that and it's done. The first step is to remove the spare tire from the old carrier. The factory bumper on the Hard Rock Edition Rubicon is designed by AEV and it's pre-drilled for this tire carrier. The next step is to remove the cover or vent bezel that houses the connector for the center mounted high brake light and disconnect it. After that you want to take off the factory tire carrier and the built-in brake light. Next you want to install the tailgate bracket and the saddle block. Part of this step includes cutting a notch onto the top left of the rubber insert or exhauster as the instructions call it. This only needs to be done on 2010 and newer vehicles. At this point, you want to remove the bumper and temporarily install the carrier spindle housing and the rest of the tire carrier. This is a temporary step because you can't adjust the spindle mount once the bumper is installed and you can't install the bumper when the tire carrier is on. Matt's Jeep has a tow package, so he had to disconnect the hitch to take off the bumper. but he immediately put it back on so that it wasn't hanging by the wires. Matt's Rubicon came with two rear tow hooks, but the right one had to come off to install the tire carrier. While Matt had the bumper off, he used the opportunity to wash and wax everything and put on a protective coating of fluid film. One step in the installation process is to install a bronze bushing and that proved to be quite a challenge. Lightly tighten the spindle mount into place so you can adjust it and move it around if needed. Matt had trouble getting the brass washer onto the spindle, so he used a very large socket to gently tap it into place. Now you want to insert the spindle into the spindle mount and adjust everything and get it set right. When installing the spindle mount, the instructions state that most Jeeps will require shims to make the spindle mount mount straight, and this was the case with Matt's Jeep. It was really crooked, and we couldn't get it straight without the shims. Matt rigged up his jack stand so it would hold the tire carrier in place while he tightened it down.
Once everything's properly aligned, you're ready to permanently bolt the spindle housing into place. That involves drilling a hole into the frame of the Jeep and should only be done after making 100% certain that everything is in the proper position and working as it needs to. Otherwise, once that hole is drilled, you can't adjust the carrier at all. At this point, you need to take off the tire carrier assembly, but you leave the spindle mount in place that you just installed. Now you want to put the bumper back on and reattach the trailer hitch if you have one. Once that's done, you reattach the tire carrier assembly to the spindle mount and tighten it into place. To make this easier, Matt put a little bearing grease onto the brass bushings. Next, you need to install a new center-mounted high brake light. This can be one that you have already or one that AEV recommends. Matt went with the one made by AEV because it's designed to work perfectly with this tire carrier. I'll provide a link to it in the description below. After this, you reattach the turnbuckle linkage to the tailgate bracket and make any adjustments if needed to make sure the door opens smoothly. Once Matt's new tires arrived a few days later, he was able to mount the spare tire per the instructions. So the tire carrier has to go back because you don't want any gap in this area here. And you do that by loosening that bolt right there. and then tightening this bolt to pull the tire backwards. And then you need to attach the safety washer, which is an extremely important step. One of the last steps is to re-tighten the anti-vibration screw, and that means taking the tire off again. At that point, the installation is pretty much done. You can tighten up your tire and then step back and admire your work. So if you have any questions about how Matt installed this, please leave a message in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer as best I can. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.